Hey guys, this is Chris Spate with Cheat the Game. I'm going into this in regards to infinite health and infinite ammo. I have several people written to me that it is totally eluding you. And these are more experienced type people that are having trouble, uh, I guess, finding it. Or I don't know, but maybe having trouble comparing it out. I'm not really sure what the problem is. I mean, it's, it was just straight up value searching for me just like any other game. So... Uh, I'm not sure what I what I do have is I did put the crack on my version So I don't know if just the regular version, you know has some kind of preventative method or not I don't know that but you can still maybe go to game copy world or something like that and get the no CD crack uh, For the game and that may alleviate a problem that you may be having. I don't know I've I've talked to people that do not use the crack uh, that have not had any problem with it as well. So I, I, I don't know what the problem is, but I'm just going to show you what I do to find infinite health and infinite ammo in this game and show you just how straightforward it is. So that's basically what this is about. Also, I want to apologize about taking down a video that I had recently put up there. It was not meant to go public, and I apologize about that. That was done by accident. I forgot to put it on unlisted. And I was just showing somebody something in that game, get over it. But it wasn't really meant to be a tutorial. I was just showing him what I was talking about you know in a previous conversation so uh, if you got that in your notifications and saw it taken back down I apologize that was not meant for uh, public I do have it and I can re-upload it if you guys want to see it I was just showing him how he could get uh, the golden bucket and you know how to affect gravity in that game without you know actually winning 50 times get to get the golden bucket and how to manipulate gravity but you know i didn't really feel it was worthy as a tutorial because i wasn't speaking in it i was just showing them so i apologize about that so that being said uh let's go ahead and get started uh first of all for this game please make sure before you attach to the game that you go over here to edit settings and right here at debugger options for this game we need to use the windows debugger so I know I encourage to always keep it on VEH, but for this particular game, we want to make sure it's on Windows Debugger. Make sure that this is ticked. Try to prevent detection of debugger. Now, if you go to any other game, you want to switch back to VEH. I always recommend VEH over Windows every day of the week, okay? So that may be your problem right there for all I know. I, I don't know. I don't know what problem you're having finding this uh, ammo and health. But let's just go check it out. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and attach to the game. Alrighty. And Resident Evil 2. And I'm not going to load my associated table. I'm just going to pretend like I haven't even tried to hack it yet. And we'll just get into it, okay? Like I say, I mean, the values for me are straightforward. I mean, there was no, you know, really hard searching. Uh, the health gave me a little problem because I started with float. But uh, it happens to be a 4 byte. So you just go to 4 byte and it just decreases like normal. And I'm going to load up. Uh, I thought I had one at an earlier time. Yeah, this one here. When I first entered the police station. I progressed a little more in the game. But I, I, want, I want those zombies back so we can look for infinite health. Alright, so we'll go ahead and hit the easiest one first. And that will be ammo. Okay, so let's go here, and when we point, you see we have 10 in the chamber, 0 in inventory. So all we have in the chamber is it for right now, so that's what we're going to find is the chamber. And that's all you really need is the chamber ammo. And we already showed how to make an inventory editor. But like I say, I, I haven't had the problems that you're stating that uh, you guys are having finding this stuff, so I don't know... I really don't know what the problem is. Like I say, you're you're, going, you're about to see this is just straight up value searching, value manipulation. This there's nothing fancy about it. So it just takes a long time to scan because it's a big big game, a big remake. And they did a great job with it too. I know that some of you are asking about modifying the time to get that S plus ranking. I have to look into that. I haven't looked into it, but I don't know if it's using the time based off calling a Windows API function. Like the clock time and date and stuff like that or if it's just using internal 
uh, programming to keep up with time so I don't know how that's done yet and uh, per one if it's calling an API function you have to do it a little bit differently than if it's just a game based function so uh, well I'll have to look into that but yeah you can definitely modify it we'll just have to check on that later I just don't have time right this second to do it so I apologize about that so let's go ahead and decrease the value we went down to nine this exact value and we're down to 17, 8, and we're left with one address. Let's just freeze that value, see if it stays there. And it's holding steady at 8. Very good. So you see I found the address. Now that we have it on Windows Debugger, I'm going to find out what accesses this address just so I can see everything that's going on with it. It'll show me everything that's reading and writing to it. And you see up here we have a bunch of things going on with it already that's constantly reading it. When we're in the inventory, the top two are reading it whether we're in the inventory or out in the world. And that third one right there is only doing it when we're in the inventory screen. So that's only dealing with the inventory when we go into inventory. Let's see what the others are. When I'm pointing a new opcodes or when I'm aiming a new opcode pops up, you see that there. When I'm not pointing and when I fall off around you see it goes through this these structures here which looks like it's uh, this is a different structure but this is part of the same structure here and this is where it's actually finally writing the final value so basically you can basically go any to any one of these if you want it to look up the address it's better to hit one of these two up here that's constantly reading if you're just wanting infinite ammo and don't care about finding the address you can just go to where it's writing to it manipulate it directly and that's what we're going to do I'm, <clears throat> excuse me i'm just going to go to where it's writing it directly uh, like I say, I, I, I'm not going to go in all the tracing right now, so uh, we'll be sitting here forever if I do. These are things you can look up on your own. You can find out what's giving that value to EBX and then kind of trace it back. And uh, usually somewhere, especially on a reload, is where it's going to be dealing with your cat. And that's the best place to find it. It's when the opcodes that will pop up over here when you reload or what it's accessing when it reloads. Because somewhere, it's got to be comparing your cap so it doesn't go over it. All right so let's just modify this directly and we just always have it write 99 to it so AOB injection this point in memory and I'm just going to call this MO1 or call it whatever you want to you can name it whatever you want to let it find a unique array of bytes it does a scan uh, so it can input it into the template and there we go and we're just going to modify directly what EBX is bringing to our ammo address. So we'll just go ahead and move into EBX the hex value of 99, which is 63. And we're just going to call that infinite ammo. So I want to put that on. Finds it good and infinite ammo so you see how easy that was there's just nothing to it and uh that's basically what i do here so now we're going to go try to grab infinite health so what i like to do <clears throat> is go ahead and bypass a cut scene and get right into fighting before i start beginning my initial search i don't know if the address changes the address could change after a cut scene because it could be loading up a new map or any kind of thing like that so be aware of cut scenes in games because that could have changed the address that may be a problem also you may have done it and a cutscene popped in in the middle of your searching or something and the address changed think of a cutscene as a loading screen sometimes sometimes they use cutscenes to load up a new map okay and if a new map loads up these addresses could possibly change okay so keep that in mind that may be may have been the problem also <coughs> all right and I think it's 1200 but I forgot what it was we're gonna pretend like we don't know we're gonna pretend like we've already looked on float and we're gonna just try four byte now so I'm gonna do an unknown initial scan on four byte let's 
close this debugger. Okay, and so it finished with over 1.2 billion addresses it's monitoring, so it's going to be a little laggy here probably. And I always recommend that when you go to do these things to uh, or look for health, always have some way to heal yourself if it don't have like an auto regeneration. It's just easier to find it if you can give it an up and or an increasing and decreasing value. And I forgot where these demons are, zombies are, so we'll just have to go find them right quick. So just bear with me while I go find one. Alright, we got a cutscene coming up here, so. So I may have to redo that. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back off because I know another cutscene is coming up here. And I don't want to take a chance on the address that's changing on me. So it's best to wait till you're actually in the fight to actually do the scan. I always keep that in mind. That may have been the problem. You may have been searching for it, like I said. And a cutscene happened, new map loaded, or or whatever that may have caused the addresses to change. So anytime you hit a cutscene, I always start over there. Doesn't necessarily mean it will change, but sometimes it could. So. Okay, so now the cutscene is over, and now we can do a first search before we hit our enemy. So let's go ahead and do unknown. And I got to admit this, I, I'm not sure if it regenerates. So I'm going to hold off on hitting. Uh, I don't think it does or you wouldn't have all these health ups, but or it may do it at a very slow interval. I just don't know. So you may be missing it also by doing unchanged value search with health because you got to be wary with health because you don't know if it has like an auto regeneration factor or not. <clears throat> so I just keep a health spray with me and a zombie's going and I just, just deal with this one zombie right here for the time being. He bites you one time. All right. So we know that we did take some damage. So we'll go ahead and do decrease value. Let it do its searches there. There it goes. If I ain't mistaken, it starts at 1200. I just don't remember to be honest with you, but it's somewhere around there. But like I say, when you're doing this for the first time, you have no clue. It could be one, it could be 10, it could be a thousand. You, you have no clue, so. I mean, if it's not specifically laid out for you, and even then, you can't even trust the uh, display values a lot of the time, too. So, it's always best to do an unknown search when doing these things, because you're probably going to end up having to do it anyway. <laughs> All right, I know while it's paused, it's not going up or down. Okay, three million. Let's take some more damage. Let him take another bite, push him off. Okay, now we're down to caution. So let's go ahead and decrease value. Now, while it's paused, I'm gonna hit unchanged. Just don't hit unchanged while the game is active. Uh, for health, that is. Anything that has the possibility of having some type of regeneration, which means it's steadily increasing, even though it may be a slow amount, you can miss it if you hit unchanged while it's doing that. So. Alright. Let's 
to uh, find the game again. I think that's it. All right. Let him bite me one more time. Hopefully we won't die. See, while the game's going like this, I'm not going to hit unchanged for health. Okay, now we're in danger. So now we're going to need to pause it. Hit decrease. We're down about 75,000. And immediately I want to go to my inventory and heal myself. Now we're back up to fine, so now we're going to hit increase. It really didn't take out that much, did it? Now here is where you can, if we're all the way and you know you're fully healed, there is no more auto regeneration, so you can kind of So when you know you're all the way healed and, and your value is not fluctuating, here's where you want to go ahead and do your unchanged value while the game's running to get rid of any miscellaneous values that you can't get rid of when the game is paused. And that'll really weed them down. So, so you usually only hit it when you know you're at full value. And we're down to about, what, 258? That looks like a decent number. And you saw some change again. Get this going to the pause screen. So that brings it down to 130. And take a look right up here. Right off the bat we see 1200. And you can kind of go down through here. And look for others that make sense. But you know I haven't already done this. I can tell you right now. That 1200 is indeed our health. Okay. And to test that I'm going to take it down to about half. And then go back and take a look. Look we're already at caution. See that. I take it down. Oh man, he's getting back up. Oh no, you don't get down. And we can do a one hit kill for our enemies here in a minute. And we can test this further and put this down about 200. And we're in danger. So we definitely know this is our health. So right off the bat, what we want to do is go ahead and mark a place in memory. Find a place, put, put find what accesses the address. Boom, you already got this. Just add one of them if you can to the code list and save it health that way if the game crashes or cheat engine crashes uh, you'll have this information you can go directly back to it without having to go back and rescan it okay so what you'll do is come over here save I'm not saving this because I've already got a cheat table going on for this game ooh you see that oh there it is okay I was about to say I went to 1200 and it did not <laughs> it didn't show me heal. So now we want to find uh, other places in memory. So we're going to have to find another enemy. So it will lag a little bit while the debugger's running. Plus the other things in the background running. And here's the one coming through the window. So I want him to go ahead and <clears throat> take a bite. I've already put on frozen my health value. So it'll just write 1200 back to it anyway. Now we can see all the places in memory that popped up just now. We can see now here, we can see right off the bat it's comparing our health to zero, which triggers a death sequence possibly. We can see here that this is only, it's only writing when we've actually taken damage, and it's writing right here. EAX is writing the new value. Here's just reading. Here it's just reading. So really you could do these in any places. If you only want to do it when you actually take damage, uh, you can, or if you want it to look up the address of your character, which, you know, could have other attribute addresses tagged along with it, it's best to do it in one of these spots, but you can do it anywhere. You can also find a location that's possibly only just dealing with your character, which this is the case, but if you need an infinite, if you need an infinite health and also a one-hit kill, you're going to need your enemies there too, which means we need to compare out. So I'm going directly to where it's writing, because usually that's the shared opcode. And it's only being accessed when we actually take damage. Ooh, Lord. We see all kind of stuff going on with it here. So what is EAX actually bringing? 3E7, that's right in the new health. Okay, so where is EAX getting that information? What's originally writing it? So it's writing it here, R8 is writing to it. So let's go up, 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 up. I'm not really sure. There's all kind of nonsense going on here. Who knows? 
we can also look by browsing here here's 1200 we know that's our current up oh, there's our cap right beside it so we know that the cap is actually less than the or a less offset uh, by four than the current so if this is 58 right here r958 we know that our base or our cap will be at 54 so we can have 54 always right to our cap which is good so let's go ahead and get a couple of enemies down here and we know it's four bytes so we're going to leave it on four byte make sure the other debugger is turned off okay and it is but keep that information up in case we need to try other places in memory alrighty so what I want to do is I'm not, I don't want to kill him but I want to injure him we see a couple of things pop up now we need us to pop up so let him take a bite there we are and we're going to kind of run on but we're going to keep him alive let's see if we can grab another enemy there's a couple there's a couple very good so we see all these addresses here and uh, we just want to compare our guy out from these other miscellaneous addresses so that's what we're going to do <clears throat> And I always like using the commonalities. Once Dark Bite put this in here, I don't see how I lived without it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mark this as group one. It'll automatically put other things in group two. But I, there's just too many addresses. So I only want to use my enemy's address. So I'm just going to use ones I know are enemies. And I'm just going to mark them as group two. I'll mark this one as group two. And we'll just take a random value and mark it as group two also so we have three for group two and just us as group one and that's all we need we're going to find commonalities and scan for commonalities now here also it will show you group differences on in the base registries which we've already discussed but i'm going to uh, go a step further and i always go to the very first one i see that we know that our base address is actually in r9 but I'm gonna look in RBX. So let's go to uh, let's double click on RBX. Here's us. Here's our enemies. And I do not click on only find matching groups because you know you get stuck going through a lot of pointers that way. So be careful. I mean you can use a pointer. It's just you know it's just more work when you don't need to. And let's go to here. And I thought I already had one. Yeah, here it is. So RBX, and I'm just going to label that. I'm just going to put underscore health one. All right. And right here, I just separate them out, and here's where I just start looking. I look for anything that's different with my guy and my enemies. I like finding my own group differences if possible, like, for, the, for instance, this right here. I don't like fluctuating bays, but I see... Our enemies are always being zero, so it's possible we can use that one. It's possible we can use this one. That one isn't changing, but we see a lot of things just fluctuating here. So RBX may not be the best one to try. So you know, I'm not seeing any type of group difference that's really standing out to me. So I want to go ahead and try the next one on down. I can go to RDX next one oh, I'm sorry let's not do that and I don't have a base address in it we could use RDX just using that zero but it would have to always be zero you know to use that one so let's go to RDI instead so let's scan that one and it tells us that this is the RDI registry that we're going to be taking a look at so we're going to go in there for health to this is the second one it just lets me know that's the second one I tried and right off the bat you can see 04 we have a group difference of 0 and 1 we have lots of group differences in this one so this one looks to be a better better one right here and we can go ahead and just try some miscellaneous ones what I like to do is just take a 
screen print. You can also save this information, but to me, a screen print is just easier to maintain. And I, I can just take a look. If I need to bring the game up and see if they stay the same, I can do that. But right off the bat, I'm just going to use RDI, RDI Plus 4 because that is the base registry that we're looking in right now. It's RDI. And all the offsets are pointing to. 3C is also looks like a good one we can try, which is 2 and 0. Uh, you can write this information down, but like I say, you also have it right here in your screen print, and you can just try different offsets and you can go back to it. Also, here we have a float value, and the enemies are 1. So there's all kinds of ones you can try. And you don't necessarily need uh, a group difference as long as your guy is different from all your enemies and those enemies are never hitting your guy's value you can always use it so it don't necessarily have to be a group difference we just recommend looking for that first here's another one so you know you got plenty you can choose from and you got more registries you can look in so really a great way finding commonalities really rocks in finding this and it makes it so much easier than just using dissect data so that's what we're going to do, RDI plus 4, and we can see with our screen print that we can either use 0 for our guy or 1 for our enemies. Probably just use 0 for our guy here. So let's go back to, we can stop this, we don't need that anymore. And let's bring up, okay, let's keep that up too, just in case we can get rid of that too. Because we got uh, the screen print of it. And here is our memory viewer. So let's go to the template, AOB injection. And we're going to inject, and uh, we're just going to call this health one, or call it whatever you want. Let it find a unique array of bytes. Oh, I should have looked at that because we're sitting right beside a return and only four bytes. That's not a good thing to bring down with you, that return. So well, we need to redo that. I should have paid more attention. So we're not going to use that one. We're going to go to the code above it. Okay. If it doesn't have four bytes, it's automatically going to borrow a byte from either the next one or the next up. But usually it borrows the next one on down. You do not want to carry a return to allocate a memory if you can help it. Okay. So let's go to the one above it because that only has four bytes and we can manipulate it however we want to, but we want it to affect this code. So we'll probably have to manually adjust it. So let's do that. Or maybe not. I mean, it's, it's, it should carry our op code down with us too. So, all right, so let's try that again. Helps one. I just happen to remember that return you don't ever want to carry a return down with you if you can help it so all right so it did bring our code down with us so we know we need to manipulate it first thing right off the bat let's go ahead and put our compare in remember it was the rdi registry and it was the 04 offset and we can either choose like i said this is our screen print of it the 04 offset we can either use zero which is us or we can use one which is our enemies and I chose to use zero which is us jump if not equal to code and we can manipulate this however we want to so we don't want to affect this at all so I'm gonna separate these out right here and the good thing about it is these this place is the best place to put like a one hit kill script you never want to put a one hit kill in an area that's constantly reading because as soon as it loads up the enemy's going to die it's best to wait till it actually takes damage and write the zero into there if you're going to do a one hit kill which we are going to do so right here we know that our base or i'm sorry our cap is at 54 r9 plus 54 so we're just going to modify this right here and we're going to move into that eax R9 plus 54 which is our cap and if it does it down here I'm gonna have it XOR EAX and EAX and that'll be a one hit kill so any enemy I hit that's a one hit kill beware of this 
if you happen to have allies or people you need to protect because you will have to separate them out too or they will die with one hit so be very aware of that but you know just for the time being i'm just showing you quickly how you can do this and also let me say this anytime you x or any value with itself it will always equal zero okay it will always equal zero so basically that's what i'm doing is i'm just putting zero in eax so every time and since we're only in a place that only is accessed when the damage is taken or damages or our health is affected it'll write zero next time I shoot them so I can turn my code off and let's label this uh, F health test because we still need to test it we need we don't trust that uh, compare yet we need to test it throughout the game to make sure it's going to be a solid compare take a look ah I didn't have time to shoot it off oh crap They should die one hit. Well, I, I put myself in that spot, so you know that's my bad. Let's get away for a little bit and get us some distance here. They should die with one hit. Boom. Take a look. That should auto write zero to there. Oh, here he comes. Let's take a look. Boom. And you see they're dying with one hit. So as soon as we hit them, it accesses that area in memory and they die with one hit. And you can see we got attacked big time. And look, we're still at full health. We're still at full health. So our code is working. So I do hope <clears throat> that this helps you. And uh, I, like I said, I don't know what trouble you had other than maybe you hit a... I, I'm thinking now maybe you hit a cutscene and the address changed on you in the middle of your search. And that may have been what happened. So make sure that you're in an area that you know a cutscene isn't coming up or a map's going to load up on you while you're busy searching or it could really screw you up. Thank you guys so much for coming out and I really appreciate all of you coming out to support Cheat the Game and watching these vids. Please place a like on it. This helped you out. And also if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. we got great more content coming out in the very near future. I will look into this time up here and see what I can do and probably possibly come out with a video later this week if I can actually find it and manipulate it. Uh, I'll just have to look and see. I don't know yet, but I'll try. I want to go ahead and thank my partners. These guys are what keep Cheat the Game running they are uh, awesome in the fact that they donate to cheat the game every month it only costs a dollar and I, I try my best to give them the best perks and everything so come join us over at our discord our Facebook channel and uh, come be a partner it's only a dollar a month and I give away, I give away games I give away free lessons and uh, they get a lot of content that the regular public just does not uh, are able to get their hands on so uh, come join us and I too will grant that to you <laughs> but uh, thank you all so much for all your kind contributions and just coming out here and supporting us we really do appreciate it but for right now I'm going to go ahead and cut on out of here so you guys take care keep on hacking most importantly please enjoy yourself that's really what it's all about you cheat the game fellas because believe me it doesn't mind cheating you you all take care now.